This activity can be a lot of fun to do and you learn a lot about your students um, through design thinking with learning spaces. I did this with a teacher and she quickly learned that a couple of her students, um, one was colorblind and another one couldn't hear. Um, so that was not on any of the paperwork that these students had about themselves and it came through this design thinking activity. So what you're going to do is you are going to just quickly explain the design thinking steps to your students. So um, you'll just kind of quickly go over each of the different processes and then explain that they're going to go through all of these different processes throughout today's activity. And then I like to just kind of tell students what kind of happens when we do the design thinking. Sometimes we think it's a straight line, but it's really not. Um, we might argue, we might walk away, we might need a break, we might need like an agreement because a lot of this design thinking is a lot on our brain and it's okay that we fail. And so again, there's gonna be lots of failures before we actually launch this um, end product. Now this one's more focused on learning spaces, but it's just kind of good to kind of start here and just kind of say some of the seating arrangements that we create as a class might not work. Um, or some of the proposals that we'd come up with, again, might not work and that's okay. We're just gonna keep launching and keep trying different things and getting feedback. So the first thing is students are going to be partnered up. Students are going to meet their user and this is going to be their partner, okay? So they're going to interview their partner and they are going to um, be talking about this learning spaces, okay? And what kind of that partner needs. So again, if a student's colorblind, if a student um, can't hear, if a student's in a wheelchair, if a student needs to sit away from the door, all of those different things, students are going to interview their user. And again, they're gonna be partnered up. And I talk about being user focused. So thinking about here's your user, you need to be focused on that person this entire time. I also like to show them this, who was the designer was focused just on them. They weren't focused on the user. They weren't focused that the user would need the toilet paper right next to them and how much of a pain that would be to reach around. And again, the kids like to laugh at this image and it's just kind of a fun way to show them that, hey, that um, we need to be focused on that person and we need to create with that person in mind when we're designing this learning space. So um, the how might we question is just kind of a quick one. How might we redesign the classroom experience? So again, just asking the user, how might we redesign this classroom experience to make it better for you? Um, what does it need to look like and what does it kind of need to feel like? So I remind my students, ask why, take notes. Um, it's not like time to judge, it's time to really listen and understand. So for example, I like to use this image here. Why was that seat there? Well, um, how can that person see what's going on in the game? Who created that, um, that kind of stuff? So that way they just kind of start to think about what is going on, how does this person feel sitting there? And then we start the interview process. Um, so the first thing is we um, identify who's gonna be the designer and who's gonna be the user. So then I just have students raise their hand if they're the designer, and then I have them raise their hand if they're the user. And again, they're gonna have, it's a timed activity, it's pretty quick, um, and then they will kind of go through this. So they have one minute to share their experience with their partners. So the first thing is they're gonna focus on the user and that person. So they, these are kind of questions to help them guide them. However, they don't have to answer these questions. They can come up with their own. Um, but again, these are just kind of there if students need that resource. And I like to kind of say these as they're going through their minute. Um, so what does the user need from his or her classroom? What kind of things make the current classroom not very good? What would he like or not like from this classroom? Um, what would make it the best classroom for your partner? And again, students have a minute to ask these different questions and they're just jotting down notes. The designer, the user is just sharing their experience. Then um, the user will have one minute to share their experience um, about this. So they're gonna just kind of share again, anything that was left out, anything about their classroom that they want to share. So they have one minute to share their experience um, about a classroom. They can share a story. And again, they just have a minute. Then they're going to um, reflect back. This is really good active listening. So the designer might say, what I heard you say is, and then the user might say, um, yes, that's correct. Or no, you missed this part. And it's really working on that active listening. 
Um, and then it's just kind of asking um, a final kind of reflection question. What is the problem your user is experiencing? And now students are going to think, um, is it user friendly? Does it make sense? Would someone else be able to use it without explanation? Make, test, debug, and remake. So they're going to start to create their classroom, kind of thinking about what is their classroom going to look like? Will someone be able to understand what they're kind of trying to get across? So in the ideate stage, they're going to sketch four different um, answers to that partner's kind of need for the classroom. They might set up the desk so that they're in rows. They might set them so they're in group work so that um, the learner can have collaborative workspace. They might set it up so that there's flexible seating. Again, no wrong answers here. It's just getting students to think. And they are just quickly doing like a crazy sketch. They have 40 seconds for each box. And they're just quickly writing out um, all of their different sketches. Um, I've seen this done with eight, but if you want to kind of modify it, you can just do four. You just need to change your number if you're gonna do eight again. And then they're gonna give feedback. So they're gonna talk to their partner. What's something that you like? What needs improvement? And they're going to use that yes and mindset, like, yes, this is great, and that would really help me because of this, or I like this idea, but what if you thought about this? Um, so kind of using that and type of mindset. And then here, students, um, this is like right here too, it's like a four area. This is where students are going to get feedback. So what worked, what didn't work, what is um, going well. And this document has kind of everything that I used for this and I just printed out and made like a packet for students. So that way they could use their hands to make notes. There was nothing really technology wise, but for this presentation. And then they're going to launch. So they're gonna make those changes that they got from their user and they're going to um, kind of redesign or add to their design. And then they started to build. So they started to really build on those ideas um, with the solution that really thought they, that would work best. And they had three minutes to kind of build um, and their partner helped them with this part. And then after that, they went to another group and they shared their design and asked for more feedback. Um, so then we just kind of again told students, you know, it's okay to break things, try new stuff and fail. And then we um, had them give 30 second pitches for their design and why someone should buy their learning space. Um, and then from there, the teacher decided which learning space she was going to try out. And she took her students advice and did it. She set up her classroom that way. Um, so again, students were able to, um, from their pitches, there was one winner that was one from the group. And that was the design that was created on Monday. So again, a really fun activity. And if you need help, because I do know this is a lot, happy to come in and help. Um, but it really does teach you a lot just from listening to students as you're going through the different steps of this and as you're walking around you're hearing different conversations as well.